teacher, teacher us, but in Warinda. Uh, uh, we are now going to look at uh, the test for the test for reducing sugars. However, before we talk about reducing sugars, okay, as we talk about this reducing sugars, yeah, some people were, were in my inbox and they were asking that, by the teacher, why are these sugars called reducing sugars? What does it mean by reducing sugars? Why are they called so? Now, in the previous episode, or in the episode that we was the first one about fruit tests, we saw that as far as sugars are concerned, or carbohydrates, as uh, carbohydrates are concerned, these carbohydrates are categorized into three types, and these three types are, one was the monosaccharides, 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 another one was disaccharides, disaccharides, and then another one was, was poly, polysaccharides. Now we saw that uh, these uh, types of sugars depend on their sizes, how? This one which are mono, mono means one. So these are sugars which are made up of one unit. One, one unit or one sugar unit. These ones die means what? Means two. So it means disaccharides, these are made up of what? These are made up of two sugar what? Two sugar units. Two sugar units. So it means poly. Poly means many. So it means polysaccharides, these are sugars which are made up of, which are made up of many, many sugar what? Many sugar units. Many sugar units. So if I have a sugar which is made up of small molecules, which we are calling units, which are referring to as units, for example. If I have a sugar which is made up of only one unit or one molecule, one sugar molecule, and I have the one which is made up of two sugar molecules, and I have the one which is made up of very many. So we are saying which one is the biggest? That means this one here, which is made up of very many units together, this one is big, the B is the biggest. In terms of size, this is the biggest. Then this one here, it means it is intermediate. It's not big, it's not small. Its size is intermediate. Yeah, and then it means this one here is the smallest. It means this is the smallest in terms of, in terms of size. It means this is the smallest, the smallest in terms of size. So because these are the smallest sugars, it means when you eat, when you even if you eat food, when you eat, for example, posho, that posho, when you eat it, it must be, uh, it is made up of, uh, for me, if it, let me use an Irish potato. Irish potato, uh, sweet potato has got a lot of starch. Oh, so Irish potato has got a lot of starch. When you add starch, that starch is a big, is a big sugar, and therefore it's a polysaccharide. But when you eat that starch, when it, as it is moving your digestive system, it is broken down. Starch is broken down to maltose. Maltose is a dye. Saccharide, but the maltose is not the smallest. You have to do the size of the of the disaccharide is intermediate. So maltose is not the smallest. So maltose must again later when uh, when it reaches in the small intestines, maltose again broken down into glucose. So glucose is a monosaccharide. Have you understood what I've said? I've said when it's Irish potato, Irish potato has starch. Starch is a big sugar. And therefore, that big sugar, because of its big size, it cannot be able to pass through the smaller holes within your intestines to enter into blood. And therefore, what happens to it? What happens to it must be broken down. It must undergo what you call digestion. It must undergo digestion. And after it has undergone digestion, it means it will be broken down into small particles. What are these small particles? Starch, which is a big sugar, is going to be broken down into maltose. Maltose is, a, is somehow big, somehow small. This maltose still, because of that size, it cannot still be able to pass through the small intestines. So that, that, that sugar, that sugar would be broken down in the intestines. What's reaching in the intestines will be broken down into, into monosaccharide, which is known as glucose. So glucose bit being a monosaccharide, which is made up of one small unit, one unit, one sugar molecule like this, it's that glucose which is able to be absorbed into the blood streams. So these ones here, are the ones which are always absorbed because of their small size. These ones can't be, can't be absorbed, so they must be first be broken down. So we have got characteristics of all these ones here. We have got characteristics of all these sugars here. And uh, as we saw in the first video, I'm not going to demonstrate them here because you already saw, but we saw that the monosaccharides here, these are sweet. They are sweet. Glucose is sweet. I have glucose with me here. You eat glucose from the shop. You have glucose you buy from the shop. This is very sweet. Yeah, it is sweet. It is sweet. Uh huh. We it, it is it is soluble. It is soluble in water. Soluble in water, and we are saying it is crystallizable. Crystallizable means it can be able to form 
crystals. When it comes here, the same story. These ones are sweet. But in here, we are going to add a word sweeter. Yeah, they are sweeter. They, they are sweeter. They are sweeter. Uh -huh. Then, they are also soluble in what? They are also soluble in, soluble in water. And they, also, they are also crystal. They are also crystalline. They are also, uh, they are also capable of forming crystals. One example here, one example that I'm having here with me is sucrose. Sucrose. I have sucrose here. Yeah, when you check sucrose, yeah, if I pick out uh, a small sample of sucrose, you are going to find out that it is, um, when I pick out a small sample of sucrose and I show you, you are going to see that indeed, uh, yeah, if you were here, I would tell you to touch. I would tell you to touch. But this sucrose here, this sucrose you see here, is uh, soluble in water, uh, it is crystalline, and, uh, and we are saying, uh, it is, it is sweeter. If this sucrose, actually, sucrose, I already told you that this sucrose is, is sugar we have, you have, you take at home. That sugar you take at home is sucrose. Yeah, in fact, I have had some students say that, yeah, you know what, I want some sucrose. That's very good. Sucrose this is sugar which is get from sugar cane. And the sugar we have, the sugar you have at home, the sugar you take from the shop, that is sucrose, which is from sugar cane. So we have the one for the lab, but this one for the lab is also from sugar cane. Why it is white is because it is more purified. It is more purified compared to her. Now somebody is asking, hey, so you want me that the one we are having is not very pure. That's true. Uh, this one is uh, more purified to remove to ensure it, it, it is sure it's pure, the sucrose, and not have, it's not having any other thing. Yeah, so this sucrose, I already is demonstrated all these ones, all these characters, I've already demonstrated them in the previous video, so you check it out. Uh, the one which was recorded in 2020. Uh, yeah, so you check it out, you find all these demonstrations there. I'm just trying to do a review. Uh -huh. Now, we are saying it is sweeter, sort of one crystal. And then here, we are saying this one is the opposite. All the characters of this one is the opposite. So it means these ones are not sweet. It means these ones are not sweet. They are not sweet. Don't say they are bitter. Ah, they are not bitter. They are, they are not sweet, just. Uh -huh. Then they are, they are not soluble. They are not soluble. Or you can say they are insoluble. And then we are saying they are non, they are non crystalline. crystalline. They are non crystalline. Examples here we have examples here we have the likes of what? We have the likes of starch. Here we have starch. Starch. Starch is, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the food we get from plants. That's how plants store their food. We have starch, we have glycogen, glycogen, we have cellulose, we have cellulose, we have chitin, chitin. All these are carbohydrates which are all which are all polysaccharides. Here, the examples here, we have uh, martos, martos, we have glucose, uh, sorry, 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 we have uh, martos, we have sucrose, we have martos, we have sucrose, I've told you sucrose, sucrose is the sugar we get from sugar cane, and then you have got lactose, lactose is the sugar which is from milk, lactose is milk sugar, sucrose is sugar from, uh, from, uh, sugar from, uh, from sugar cane, martos is from, you can find this martos in uh, seeds which are undergoing germination, germinating seeds. And then here we have our glucose. We have our glucose. We have got our fructose. Fructose is a sugar which is found in fruits. And then we have got the uh, galactose. Galactose is also sugar which you find in milk. Which you find in milk. Glucose, fructose, and galactose. Now, why am I talking about these ones? It's because I want to talk about this thing. Uh, we are going to test for reducing sugars. Reducing sugars. We are saying, why are they called reducing sugars? They are now, of these three, these ones, something important is that these ones are reducing sugars. All these ones are reducing sugars. All these ones which are here are reducing sugars. All these sugars here, which are monosaccharides, glucose, fructose, galactose, they are reducing sugars. These ones, we are saying some, some, e.g. what? E.g. martos. Some e.g. martos are what? Are Reducing, are reducing, and then and some, and some e.g. e.g. sucrose, and some e.g. sucrose are what? Are non-reducing. So when it comes to disaccharides, some are reducing, some are reducing, and then others are non-reducing. When it comes to polysaccharides, we are saying all these ones, all of them, for them all, all are non-reducing. All of them are non-reducing. Why am I bringing this background? So we are, it means the examples of reducing sugars, we have all monosaccharides and some disaccharides. 
And then examples of non-reducing sugars are all polysaccharides and some disaccharides. Now, why are they called reducing? You as you know the meaning of reducing from chemistry. If I can borrow some knowledge from chemistry. Reducing means what? Uh, from chemistry, reducing, reducing means removal of oxygen, removal of oxygen, uh, addition, addition of hydrogen, and then addition, addition of electrons. Uh, three of those statements mean, mean reducing. So for, uh, it means for a sugar to be called reducing sugar, it means when you cut it, see chemical nature. In as it's reacting with Benedict's, it must be doing one of these. And now you see. Benedict solution, Benedict solution, as you see, it is blue in color. Now, if I ask you, from the little chemistry, maybe you might be knowing from more chemistry at you, should you can be, you might be having, depending on the one who is watching me. Uh, I ask which, which ions from chemistry have blue color? And maybe some of you might tell me that the copper two ions. Copper two ions, hey, whenever they are present in any solution, they appear what? They appear blue. So this color, this Benedict solution, Benedict is just a scientist, the way you can say Osbert's solution or Martin's solution. Yeah, so Benedict is just a, is a person who invented the, 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 the reagent. But we are saying the reagent is blue in color because it has copper two ions. So it means one of the components that, were, that, make, that makes it up is copper two ions. So it means if I have copper, I have got copper two ions, I have got copper two ions, copper two ions. But we are saying, these copper two ions, their color is what? Is blue. Their color is blue. But we are saying, these copper two ions are able, we are able, when you, when you add there, when you combine this, this blue, remember this is in Benedict solution. Now this is in Benedict solution. Benedict C, solution. Copper two ions which are blue are found in Benedict solution. But we are saying, when you get this Benedict, this Benedict solution which has copper two ions and you combine with a reducing sugar, with a sugar which is reducing, with a sugar which is reducing, these copper two ions are able to be turned into copper, into copper one ions. Now, these copper two, copper one ions, if you have, if you have seen other colors of copper, for example, most, some of you know the lightning conductor. Lightning conductor is made up of copper. What color is the lightning conductor? Those ones who usually see the lightning conductor, they want this wire which comes from the lightning conductor up to the up to beside the building and it goes down. That color is which one? That color is maybe it's brownish. Yeah, there's some brown, it's brown in color. So uh, we are saying this copper two ions is brown. Is brown. Some other people call it red. Some people even can say it is red. But I'm saying it is brown in color. So we are saying. When you check what has happened to copper, this was copper two. Here it has become copper, copper one. And chemically, if, I, if I'm to do this one, it means here I must have added one electron. If I add one electron, it means this sugar has added one electron to copper two. Because this electron is negatively charged, it will reduce this charge from positive. It's just like having positive two plus negative one is the same as one is just like two plus two minus one. Two minus one is got what? It's got one. So I have two positive plus one negative, I get one positive. So it means this sugar, this sugar has adds electrons to copper two ions, which is found in Benedict solution. And therefore it turns it from copper two and turns it to copper one. So since this sugar is adding an electron to this to this copper two turning it to copper one. That's why we say this sugar is reducing. Have you got me? I am saying, we are calling this sugar, we are saying these sugars are reducing. Why? Because they have the capacity, they have got the capacity to add electrons to copper two ions. And I told you that reducing means addition of what? Addition of electrons. So it means these sugars have the, when you cut their chemical nature, they have the capacity to add electrons to what? To copper two ions. And therefore, when you add electrons to copper two ions, these copper two ions are turned or reduced into what? Into copper one ions. That's why we say that these sugars, all these sugars which have the capacity to reduce copper two ions to copper one ions, 
are called reducing sugars. So it means this capacity is with all these sugars which we are calling mono, monosaccharides. And uh, I've told you the examples, we have glucose, fructose, and galactose. So it means if, now the condition for the reaction, for this reaction here is that we are supposed to what? To boil. There is a, a condition for, for boiling here. The condition for reaction is boiling. So when you get copper two ions, and you combine them with a sugar which is reducing, the sugar which is reducing will add electrons to the copper two ions in presence of heat and to turn into copper one ions. And that's what you mean by the term reducing sugars. I hope you have got that one very well. If they are, tomorrow they ask you that the, why are you saying sugar is called so, I hope you not say I didn't know. That was just by did not tell me. I have told you now, I hope you have known that. Yeah, so come with me, come with me as we look at that test. Thank you very much.